everyone, it's Matt Weissfeld again, and I'm coming back at you with another VPI tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at our VPI motor and that potential pop you might get in your system. Now, first, just to explain what that is when you experience it, that's based on the system. So it's not a turntable based thing, it's not a VPI defect. What's happening is it's just an incompatibility between something in your electronics and the capacitor we use in the VPI motor. Now, unfortunately, not everyone's on the same page and we can never have all the electronic companies standardize everything. There's different designs, different types, which is fine. So if you get that startup pop and also turn off, there is a solution. Well, the first one is you could just lower your volume and you can stop this video right now. But if you want to keep your volume up, you just send us a quick email and we send you one of two potential capacitor swaps. Now, in the history of VPI, we've done the wiring of our motors in two ways. In the early days, it was using wire nuts and tying off the ends. In more recent years, we've actually stepped up our quality and game in using these wonderful little boards that pop right in. But before we get started, let's get some tools to make our life easier. We'd recommend an electronic drill to make life easier to take that bottom plate off. And later on for that PCB board, we'll need a tiny flathead screwdriver. We'll put that on the side. And of course, most importantly, that VPI mug. And not just for when you're using it for your coffee, which is always a good thing, but actually for safety reasons, believe it or not, because when we flip this motor, we don't want to put it right on the table and then suddenly hit our spindle. So by having our mug, I can take my motor and very safely flip it over. And now my spindle's safe and I could get exposure to the bottom part of the motor. So putting it on my VPI mug, like so, I'm gonna take my drill. Take off the bottom plate. Now, not all VPI motor assemblies have the same type of bottom, but they're all similar sense that they have four screws somewhere in the bottom and come off. So yours might be a little different. On the Prime that we're using, it has this thin piece that just comes right off once you take these four feet off. You put those on the side for later. Uh, well, then from there, I'm going to expose out the wire. So then the wire shows that we have our capacitors, our, our start button, all the wires you need to get the motor going. So now this yellow capacitor, we're gonna skip all the engineering jargon and just go for colors. The capacitor you're gonna have in your motor is either gonna be a red color, brownish red color, or a yellow color. They're all the same capacitor, things have just changed over the years. And you're gonna swap that capacitor with a blue capacitor. So we're looking at the yellow capacitor, I'm gonna unscrew the wire nuts, which will either be blue or gray. I'm gonna put them on the side. I'll need those again in a second. And then you're gonna unwind the existing wires. Might be a little tough, but that's okay. Good way to develop those calluses on your fingers. Okay, and then I take my yellow capacitor, put it on the side. You may even wanna keep it for down the pike if you ever have to redo this if you change your electronics again. And then from there, I'm gonna take my blue capacitor and just rewire it exactly the way it just was. Sometimes it can get a little tricky there. Okay, then once I have it rewired, my blue capacitor's in, and I take those same two blue wire nuts. Now, early days, we did switch between blue and gray, so if your wire nuts are not blue, the gray ones are fine as well, as long as you cover all of the exposed wire to keep from any electrical issue. And just like that, I have swapped my capacitor and will no longer have that popping noise. Then I could just fold the wires back into the motor pod, Take the plate, put it back over here, and screw my feet back on, which you, to save time, we're gonna skip. And now we're gonna look at the other type of wiring house. Now moving on to the other type of wiring that you might have in your VPI motor pod. So I'm gonna take my motor, and again, for time's sake, we've already removed the plate and feet. I'm gonna rest it right on my mug so it's safe for my spindle. 
and we are going to use our small flathead to loosen the screws that are holding those wires in. Now what's really cool about the board is it actually has all the wire colors labeled. So if you forget what color was what after you've taken them out, no problem. You can just look at the PCB board and it will tell you. If you have any trouble pulling any of the wires out, just make sure the screw is fully out and then just give it a little bit of a pull to make sure it comes out. Okay, so we have that all loosened. Let's go take each wire out. I suggest loosening all the screws first and then just, oh, looks like I did loosen that one. And if you miss it, just go right on back and loosen it up and you'll be able to remove it. So I removed my board and I'm going to put this, again, you can see that same yellow capacitor that we saw earlier with the wiring with the, with the wire nuts. I'm going to take this board and put it on the side. Again, you can save it for down the pike and taking another board that VPI will provide. All you have to do is email us and we will mail it to you with the blue capacitor. And then I'm just going to rewire it with the colors, putting my black wire with the black, the blue, the blue label. And just like that. We're all set. Again, I suggest you try to get them all in first, and then you can tighten them all up in one shot. Don't get frustrated if they get a little fussy. It all works out in the end. Okay, and so I'm going to start by first putting all the wires in for that first set, giving them all a little turn there to tighten it up. Then I'm going to put in the next set of wires. Again, matching up the black label with the black wire, white label with the white wire. And we're done. Then we put it right back into our motor pod. We grab the bottom plate, put it on top of the motor, and screw your original feet back on. And just like that. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us for another VPI tutorial, and we'll see you next time.